Uh, Senator Kramer, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank all three of you for your service and for being here, and God bless the men and women under your command. General McKenzie, is it true that U.S. forces had the ISIS case cell uh, under surveillance prior to August 26 and could have struck them before the deadly terrorist attacks at Kabul, but were not given the authority to strike? No, that's not true. You know, I noticed that the President was quick to take a victory lap after the first strike and push this tough guy image he, he's so famous for. He once uh, threatened to have union bosses beat me up. Um, he said things like, just do it. If we find more, we'll strike them. Of course, this was after he said of the ISIS-K leaders, we will hunt you down. He, he talks tough. He's going to go get them. But I also notice he's been equally silent, taking no responsibility for the strike on innocent civilians, including children, that was in part caused by, in my view, his, his insecure need to appear tough. He just let you take the blame, General McKenzie. But what I really worry about is, that the, air, is the air crews who actually uh, were pressured into pulling the trigger that terrible day. Secretary Austin, as you know, the North Dakota Air National Guard operates Reapers around the world, and I know what kind of pressure those air crews are under and the level of responsibility they feel to accomplish their, their missions uh, properly. And I'm worried that whoever was operating the aircraft involved in, this, in the uh, tragic 29th August strike was set up to fail by an administration that wanted a political victory more than they wanted an American victory. Have you reached out to the air crew to make sure that they understand it's not their fault that there are seven dead children? I, I have not, uh, Senator. As you probably know, uh, I have directed a, uh, a three-star review of, uh, of this incident. General McKenzie did an initial investigation, and I've directed a three-star review, uh, and so uh, I, I won't make any comments. You know, there certainly seem to be a lot of indications that a terrorist event was likely, if not imminent, leading up to the ISIS-K bombing on the 26th. Were our military members still, ex why were our military members still exposed after that threat was known, General McKenzie? The purpose of our force at uh, the airfield was to bring American citizens and Afghans at risk out. In order to do that, you had to have the gates open. You had to process people. You're right, there were a lot of threats, and we worked very hard to minimize those threats, and, we, and you try to balance it. Every once in a while, the bad guys sneak one in on you. This is an example of where that occurred. It wasn't through any, any lack of attention to trying to find those cells or looking hard for them. And we did find a number, and we did, in fact, which I'll be happy to talk about in closed session, we did, in fact, enable uh, uh, and stop those attacks from occurring. This one we were not successful on. So speaking of that, I want to drill down just a minute since, since I have a couple. The Taliban was controlling the checkpoints, obviously, around the airport. And you had indicated, General McKenzie, that U.S. at that time had a, you called it a pragmatic relationship of necessity with the Taliban. Did we share any information with the Taliban about the ISIS-K threat? And, and if so, how did, they did the Taliban respond to it? In other words, how did they get in? Is it possible that they let them in on purpose? So it is possible that they let them in on purpose, but the body of intelligence indicates that is not, in fact, what happened. You know, so one event happened, and that's a terrible, tragic event. A lot of other events didn't happen because that outer circle of Taliban forces were there. Look, I, I, I defer to no one in my disdain for the Taliban and my lack of trust for them, but I believe they actually prevented other attacks from occurring. This event, someone got through. I believe there were other times when people did not get through. All right. Look, the, the reality is um, there are patriotic Americans all over the country, and certainly in North Dakota that are really upset. I mean, they're, they're genuinely pissed off. And they sense that there's a lot of sort of political positioning and, and apologizing and rationalizing. And no one's really saying uh, anything other than it was an extraordinary event. Now, some of you, you have admitted that it wasn't perfect. I think we're your words, General Milley. Um, but extraordinary success just rankles them when they hear that, <clears throat> especially when they see that out of the 124,000 um, people that were that were brought to the United States, we don't know much about a whole bunch of them. And yet we know a whole bunch about people that weren't brought back to the United States. And uh, they're upset. They're really, really upset. And I know you know that. I hope that, I think you're seeing the reflection of that in their, in their elected representatives. And when we get to this afternoon, we'll probably drill down a little more on some things. But I look forward to the closed session as well, General McKenzie, to learn more about the August 26th. Thank you, Senator Thank Kramer. You.